Living here below in this old sinful world, time is running out. Today, I'd like to speak a message to the nation on justice and righteousness. I'm Lord Harris. Psalm 33, verse 12 through 18, the scripture said, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, in whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Now, verse 16 points out that no king is saved by the multitude of an host and is not delivered by how much strength he might have. Now, let me spell it out in America. You are not strong enough or big enough to have the blessings you enjoy. You have been blessed by the God who have, you have abandoned the God who has blessed you. And when he abandons you, then we will all suffer because he has blessed you. We should all enjoy the blessings together. When we miss that truth, we hurt ourselves. Verse 18 in that text shows that the eye of the Lord upon them that fear him, that hope in his mercy. You don't have to work so hard to try to find how to fix your wrong. The reason you have to work so hard is because you do not want to fix it. Mighty Babylon failed for two reasons. Number one, she forgot that God had put her in power to do right and honor his will. Number two, she mistreated God's people. America, you have committed both sinful evils and the clock is ticking. First Peter chapter 2 verse 14 points out, the government exists, first of all, for the punishment of evildoers, and secondly, for the praise of those who do good. Don't we have that turnaround? And isn't that the problem? From Washington to New Orleans, from California to New York, we have made evil good and good evil. From the White House to the State House, and even in the courthouse, when the prosecutors, the jury, and other litigants and the church house and justice and righteousness must ring from the decisions we render or you have made a bad judgment and you have a bad president, a bad court, a bad government, a bad congregation and are not worthy of the high place to which God has given you and you have been afforded by God. There is a law higher than you. And it will be administered by the true Messiah, the king, the president, the monarch. His name is Christ. We're invaded by fear. But we are not the first. It happened many times before us. Egypt began to fear the Hebrews. And it led to mistreatment, to racial injustice and oppressive measures. Men who are afraid try to pretend that they are bold and fearless. And this they do by subjecting others to slavery practicing in identity politics, establishing an entitled class to justify disenfranchising others. White people began to fear black people and enacted laws to restrict them, closed doors that at one time were always open and withheld resources that would equalize all men. They tried to make them think that they were weak because they feared that they would become too strong to contain. In 2 Timothy 1.7, states that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. These inspired words require that our actions are not shame of standing with the principles of God and even of being a prisoner of righteousness, but know that there is power in the gospel of Christ. Unfortunately, we do not use that power enough to effect change or to judge the character of men. Consequently, we reap wrong conclusions much too often and injure relationships, abandon righteousness, and drive friends to, into enemies. The gospel would make us all brothers, and that's what God calls us to be. Jesus, Jesus is the